Hello, everybody. Is everybody ready to go? Good. Here we go. That is a bugle call, obviously. But what does it mean? That's the new song for you to guess the name of today. Okay? Because in the service, as you know, I was in the Marine Corps, bugle calls are different for various things. Like, you got to get up, you got to get up, you got to get up in the morning. That's one of them, you know. But this, I'll play it again for you. And hang on, here we go. That has a particular meaning. So the contest this week is for $100 million. Guess what that means. Now, we have winners from last week where I played a song, and there's actually two winners. One came in just, just a hair in front of the other. Henny Sinkoff, again, come up with the name of the song I played, Luna Metzamara. That's, and I, I mentioned if you watch the Godfather movie, you'd see it at the wedding. And also there's another... Pixie Perfect said, kill a Luna. And I think it's also called that. But anyway, they're going to split the $100 million. <laughs> okay. Now, if anybody believes me, you should go and have your head examined today. Because obviously I'm joking. Now, I say to you, what show could you go on on TV or the Internet? And you're going to watch somebody get interviewed on a very morbid subject. And a guy comes on and plays a song or a bugle call. Look, at this is culture and, uh, cultural enrichment time. These are things you're going to learn that may, very few people know. I'll tell you what show you can go to. This is the only one. This is Life After Scientology. And I am Ron Miscavige. I am your host and cornet player. So good morning to everybody. And... Uh, just let me get a little business out of the way before we get started. If you like these shows, please subscribe. And at the same time, could you get others to subscribe and share it with a lot of people? I'd like to get these uh, our viewers up to much higher than they are right now because this is an important subject for a lot of people to know about. This is something going on in our society that shouldn't be. This is an injustice. And I really would like to see a lot of more people get behind this. So with that out of the way, or as they say these days, having said that, I would like to welcome our guest this morning, probably your favorite guest, Karen De La Courier. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, let me put my horn away and we'll get rolling here. Hang on. Now, this morning, we're going to take up a subject of current interest because this is ongoing right now as I talk. This is really a an injustice of magnitude when you think about it. And we're going to talk about it this morning. This is has to do with Valerie Haney, who sued the church. And when it went to court the first day, the judge ruled that she has to get her disagreements settled by the Church of Scientology itself. In other words, go through their arbitration or whatever you call it. I, I'm telling you, this is so bad. This is so bad, I can't put it in words. So I'm not going to try to at this moment. But I do want Karen to come on and give us her take on this because she has always come up with a very articulate statement of the goings-on. And, Karen, over to you. Because, like we say in the United States, you're okay to resign from your religion whenever you want to. Just can leave it. That's not the case with Scientology. You're not allowed to leave without them trying to screw you over big time, whether it's stalking you or harassing you or disconnecting you from your family or your friends, or maybe you losing your job. 
let's let's get rolling on that right right out of the gate, Karen. I want the audience to get a feel of who Valerie is. You're going to hear the name a lot because she is the only person in the world that worked directly for David Miscavige and the missing Shelley Miscavige for years, years. She was a complete insider. She lived, breathed, worked with them morning, noon, and night. And we've never had somebody so close in stepping out and filing a lawsuit. This is Valerie. Valerie was born in 1979 of Scientology parents. There is a huge difference to what we call second gen. Second gen abbreviation for second generation. Right. These people had no power of choice, none. Their parents dragged them in because their parents believed. I, my son, Alexander Jench, who died at 27, he was only in the cult because me and his father, Heber, put him in a cult. Your kids, <laughs> well, the, is, it, is it fair to say you would only have David left it? Oh, no, you, no, you've got your daughters. No, no, yeah. wait, I just missed what you said for some reason. It, it didn't come through. Say that again, Karen. Is right. It, is it fair? I, 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 I confessed and admitted that I had brought a child into the cult. And right. I said, what about you? How many of them are still in the cult? <clears throat> well, David, obviously. Runs Denise, the church. Denise and Lori and their children, and and I guess their children's children, my great-grandchildren, and whom on that side, between Denise and Lori, those great-grandchildren, I've never met any of them. I, I don't even know how many there are. In other words, it's, it's terrible to say. That I might as well be dead to them or dead them dead to me. It's that bad. Mm. No mm. communication, no speaking to them on the phone or sending letters or visiting them and having dinner at Christmas or Thanksgiving. N no physical contact, no showing of love. In other words... Terrible. You know, this, this is lesson number one. This is terrible. Uh, this show in the main is an educational program. It's trying to have you get enlightened into what happens when you join the yeah. cult of Scientology. You know, I use the word cult a lot now and again, inadvertently. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should because they are. I use the word church, yeah. and I get like, I get bombarded like. 10 Facebook messages, it's a cult, it's a cult, Karen, please don't call it a church. I literally get pounced on if I, I even know. really say churches. <laughs> it's, it's just an old habit. We were so used to seeing it when we worked <laughs> for them, you know? I mean, yeah, so I, I, I really, I, I get gangster activity if I use the word churches, and so I call it cult. So this is the first lesson of, of the morning. In the cult of Scientology, if you dare to leave, they will keep your children and they will hang on with bulldog teeth to those children, yeah. sometimes in an effort to spite you. Kiss goodbye to your kids forever. Yeah. And there's story after story after story of this. Uh, I, Lori Hodgson just had a birthday and this girl she lost her, she's lost her kids for like seven or eight years now. Complete and utter disconnection. I could name family after family. Now, the reverse is true. If the kids leave, they can never see their parents again. Right. So the cult believe they are more important. They have seniority over your family. Yep. 
and that is brainwashed into people all the time. Like you, you go on study to, for two and a half hours at least five days a week. You're getting brainwashed into these ways, this moral code, where the church is everything, as you know, the cult. But it, we, they call it the church is everything, and your uh, second dynamic, that is your family, is nothing compared to the Church of Scientology. It, it family has, takes the back burner. Absolutely. Now, here's Valerie. Yeah. I really want the audience to know a little of her story. And in the opening section of what she, her life in Scientology, this is the opening part of the lawsuit she filed. At approximately 10 years old, as a 10 year old, Jane was subject to bull baiting. Bull baiting is a specific procedure that everybody in Scientology goes through. You sit diagonally opposite another person. Here's a bunch of children. Here's a bunch of children. And the procedure is you have to be there without flinching, without giggling, without laughing, without uh, any reaction. You've got to be stoic. Yeah. Do you understand the word stuck? No reaction. You'd have Stick you'd have to sit there like a zombie, basically. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. And the drill is be there and confront whatever is thrown at you. Here's a bunch of children doing the drill. Right. Okay. Now, here's Valerie's lawsuit. This is word for word from her lawsuit. Bull baiting is a technique during which members, including children, Valerie was 10 years old, are trained to not react to harassment, verbal assault, threats, sexually explicit and inappropriate comments, among other things. During the process, adults would say vulgar and sexually explicit things to children and punish them if they showed any visible reaction. Specifically, plaintiff was forced at the age of 10 years old to sit in a chair while adults screamed in her face such things as, I am going to fuck you, and then I'm going to fuck your mother. You are going to suck my dick. If Valerie reacted in any way to these offensive and outrageous state statements, she's a 10 year old. Yeah. The same process of bull baiting starts over and over and over again. These actions fall squarely within California's definition of child abuse, Penal Code 237, 273A. All right, that's the opening. Giving, giving a little inkling into Valerie's life. Wow. Right? Yeah. This is what, this is, this is Valerie's life. Now, she was in this entity within Scientology called the C organization. And those are the clergy, just like you would get in the Catholic Church, you would get the, the lay people, the civilians, and then you'd get the priests right. and the cardinals and the bishops and so on. The Sea Org pledge their lives to Scientology for a billion years. You probably heard of the famous billion year contract. Right. And Valerie was in from 19, well, from the ages of six to 12, she worked in Clearwater, no schooling. She was in the cadet org, meaning where children are herded into to not be a distraction to their parents. She had a strict schedule. <clears throat> she worked and cleaned from eight in the morning till midnight as a child 
with no schooling, no formal education. Her schooling, this is Valerie, her schooling were simply studying L. Ron Hubbard procedures. She was very much ingrained on what she could say and what she could not say about Scientology and taught to never question Scientology's teachings and procedures. So <laughs> she also claims that she didn't get a day off for years. She didn't get a day off. She never got three, three weeks annual leave yeah. that supposedly a staff member was supposed to get. Now, here's the clincher. Valerie decided to flee. And uh, recently, Mike Rinder put on his blog, you can tell the difference between a, a cult and a church. Right. And the difference is what happens when you try to leave. The cults have dirty little secrets. If they didn't have secrets, you could come and go. Yeah. Who cares what you say? There's yeah. nothing. There are no secrets. There's nothing to hide. But the more they have to hide, the more they feel they cannot let you leave. Mm -hmm. They don't know if you're going to run to the media. They don't know if you're going to make a YouTube channel uh, show. They don't know what you're going to do. But what they're trying to stop are the secrets. So now, you pitch in and tell me your thoughts on what I said. Do you believe that the absolutely hang on to you for your labor and production or is it a combination of yeah they like the production but they really don't know what you're going to do i feel that's the reason they behave so, so you're, no, you're absolutely right because while it's true you are a cheap labor force like like nobody's business. I mean, we got paid when I was in the C organization, and I was in for 26 and a half years. In the beginning when I was in, we were getting paid $30 a week, and then after a while, after some years, it went up to 50 and you got about $47 and change because they took some uh, tax out. But many weeks, we never got paid. And there were, when I went for my Social Security, there were about three years, not a penny was paid in to Social Security at all. So this is truly a slave type of operation. You are a slave. When I say a slave, uh, I'm talking about you couldn't leave the compound where I was at. You couldn't make a phone call out with having somebody else on the well, telephone. Well, explain why you couldn't. Explain the reason why. Explain the security. Then you can't. When when we say couldn't, it doesn't mean that you couldn't walk to the gate. You you would be just jumped on and dragged back for escalating. Couldn't means you dare not. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, you you just couldn't. <clears throat> you couldn't leave the compound without having somebody go with you. <clears throat> for a good reason. And a good reason was not going shopping. Like you just couldn't say, I'm going to Walmart and I'm going to pick up some things. You just couldn't do it. You're stopped. It's an enclosed barbed wire covered with the spikes pointing outwards and pointing inwards. So to keep you from escaping and keep other people from coming in. But it was mostly to keep you in. And this was the life that you lead as a Sea Org member. And you had to talk on the phone with somebody listening so you don't divulge any of the bullshit that went on b behind those those gates and that uh, barbed wire fence. Your mail was opened up. I mean, I know we've gone over this before, but just get the idea of it. This is your life. 
No outgoing communication without it being filtered or stopped. You couldn't go on the on the internet without it being on a filter. The only thing you could do on the internet was buy things that you need, like little amenities. Uh, any other words that might involve some of the things about the Church of Scientology were stopped. There was a filter put on. When you when you join the Sea Org, you can't write to your mom without a security guard reading what you've written. That's right. And editing it. If you've said anything negative, Mom, I'm not feeling very happy, or Mom, I had a really rough, that letter will not go out. Yeah. So in other words, you can't write to your own mom and dad. No. And your mom and dad writing to you, that letter would be opened and again screened and filtered. And if there was anything negative, you go see an ethics officer to yeah. work out. Yeah, now to work out what to do with your parents. All these things I'm telling you. I made an attempt to call David when I first escaped. And oh, did you? Uh, oh, absolutely. Oh, and I, me, I wasn't about I wasn't put through. And I had an attorney come on the phone and talk to me. And I said, hey, listen, <laughs> knock this bullshit off with these private investigators because they were following me around. And uh, I told him, you know, why am I disconnected from my daughters? He said, you knew the score when you got in, Ron. No, I didn't. If somebody told me when I was signing that CR contract, look it, it's true. You're going to go on this beautiful journey, you know, I'm putting it in their words, to save every man, woman, and child on the planet. And along with that, you won't be able to call any of your friends or just your parents or any relatives without having person listen. Your private mail is going to be opened up and... If there's anything you shouldn't know, we're not going to let you know. Uh, and you'll be uh, sequestered inside of a barbed wire compound. And this is how your fucking life is going to be. And he says, I knew this. No, I didn't. Do you think I would have signed that? I say, hey, wait a minute. Fuck you, man. I'm not doing this shit. You want to entrap me. You want to make a goddamn slave out of me. Yet he had the balls to say to me, you knew this when you joined it. Yeah, what was the name of the lawyer? Pardon me? Do you know the name of the lawyer? Should I say it? Yeah, why not? Absolutely. <laughs> it can't come to mind right now. <laughs> oh, okay. I hate to say that. Mind you, that was in uh, 2012. Um, yeah, no, no. I, I just, there's uh, certain, lo- it wasn't Ken Moxon, right? No, no, this was, uh, he, he wasn't in the church. Oh, oh okay. And, um. God, I, I just can't bring it to my mind. That mind you, this is about, well, about eight years ago, so. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, it, 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 it's good. But what's interesting is you call your you call your son. Yeah. And the response is you get a call back from a lawyer. No, no, I didn't get a call <laughs> back. I was put through to him. Oh, you were put through. You're asking to talk to your son, David. Right. And you're put through to this lawyer. Yeah. I see. Uh-huh. I knew this guy priorly, and he seemed like a decent guy. He, but that's the social veneer. Mm. But underneath it, if you're working for an outfit like this, and you're putting people through this, there's something wrong with you. Mm. Mm. It, it, it's not the right way to live, as far as I'm concerned. Like, mm. you know, I'm sure that uh, during Hitler's regime, Goebbels was very polite at parties, you know, and he made a good martini and he pet dogs and little kids and everything. The fucking guy, he he had a control of the media. Goebbels, I'm talking about, the propaganda minister. Mm. And he told lies yeah. every day and indoctrinated the people into thinking that the Jews are all the, the reason for all of their problems. And he brainwashed the entire country. With <laughs> Some people weren't brainwashed, that's true. But the majority of them were, and the majority of them backed up Hitler. And that's with that constant indoctrination, and this is what happens. And I'm not saying that uh, Scientology is like uh, the Nazis, but the the methods of operation are pretty damn close. Like they had Hitler's youth. We had the cadet org. All right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, there's, there's little lines of similarity with all the cults, as far as I know, because... I know a little bit about some other cults. Uh, that's Netanyahu, the one that's in India. 
He even said to his followers, we want to pattern our movement after Scientology. <laughs> he said this to his followers. <laughs> and and I had a, a girl on who uh, left it and, you know, told all the things, the abuses that they went through. And I had people come on and make comments trying to slander her the same as Scientology does with you if you leave. While you're there, while you're working, and you could be a great producer of great products, fine, okay? You leave. Ah, that guy was no fucking good from the word go. I don't know why we didn't know this. Uh, you know, after 26 years, we should have really realized that Ron was so bad after all because they bought 500 variations of my name and put up a hate site. So uh, if you don't put in the real Ron com, it'll take you to their hate site where they try to character assassinate me. And I say, fuck you. I don't even pay attention to them. I pay as much attention to that as I would to a dog who barked at me on the street. I wouldn't stop and argue with a dog, although I have a lot more affinity for dogs, though, than the church. Uh, as a matter of fact, I love animals. I got a great little cat that uh, I got to bring him on the program someday just to introduce yeah. you to everybody because uh, he <laughs> eats at the table. And listen, I know this is a tangential. I'm, I'm getting off the subject. When he's, through eat, when he's through eating, he wipes his paws on a napkin. I got to catch this on a video and I'm going to show it to you. But getting back to the point about uh, Michael Hertzberg. Ah, uh, Hertzberg. Uh, did did, I, did I say the right last Michael name? Hertzberg. Yeah, he's, he's a long duration, 30, 35 years of cult money. Yep. yep. You know, I, I, I got to tell you, back to Valerie, she... She was miserable. This life of never a day off working from 8 a.m. till midnight, she was miserable. And she asked to leave several times. Yeah. She said, I, I, I want to go. I don't want to live this life. And they said, what? You worked for David Miscavige for some three You You were absolutely morning, noon, and night working for him. You, were, she, you could never leave. She was actually told why she would never be allowed to leave. Yeah, yeah. In other words, the rest of the crew knew that she would know some dirty little secrets and those dark secrets. Because they, the reason they gave her the reason why she could never leave the cult. You cannot leave because you worked for David Miscavige. Yeah. You were directly his, you know, yep. one of his staff in his inner circle. So what Valerie did, which has become famous, is there were some actors and some outside personnel. She tried car after car. She found one car that wasn't locked. She popped to open the trunk and jumped in and hid in the trunk. This is a, very much like a prison escape. Sometimes prisoners have learned their outside vendors that come in with huge trucks and <laughs> yeah but this this is oh, this is over the top because you crawl in a trunk you don't know if that trunk is going to be so airtight that you're going to run out of oxygen and you would die i mean could you imagine the state of mind that she yeah. was in after having to tolerate all this other goddamn abuse that she would resort to chancing her life being ended in order to get away from it. That's the yeah. bottom line right there, Karen. You realize that. Yeah. There have been some deaths of people locked in trunks that couldn't get out. So I was reading that the new generation of cars, all the new generation of cars, have a little button that you can push when you're locked in the trunk and the trunk open this. But that there's no way that this was some new generation car. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the latest cars. Yes. Yeah. The last, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can, you can, if you're locked in the trunk, you can let yourself out by just pushing a button. All the, it's, I think it became mandatory because people did die in yeah. trunks of cars that they couldn't get out <clears throat> of. Yep. No food, no water, dehydration, yeah. and so on. Yeah. So here's Valerie in the trunk of the car to get out of there. And Valerie knew she'd been in the cult. 
she knew the cult slave labor you 100 hours a week, 80 hours a week. There is no 401k, there is no pension, and there is no social security. Look at the chicanery. They're sitting around with three to five billion dollars. And they suck out all those donations for self yeah. to stockpile and hoard money. Yep. And screw the workers. Yeah. So here's Valerie, who worked from six to 12 years old as a child with no formal education, and then worked the next years of her life till 2017 when she escaped in the trunk of a car. Yeah. Right? Yep. And then she made a huge mistake. Yep. Again, let's get that lesson learned from one and all. She went back. They give out this thing. Come on back. Come on back. To route if out, right? Just, if you just route out legally, we won't SP declare you. SP declare is a poppycock mocked up thing that it, it, it's just uh, it's it means nothing in the outside world no. so first a person declare is just uh, uh using the n-word it's a slur yeah. on you yeah to make all other scientologists look down on you it's meaningless it's a political weapon a political tool hogwash but people buy into it and think oh then i can talk to all my friends and stuff i won't so I'll go in and be a good good boy, good girl, and I'll route out. Route out means you're seen by different people who try to talk you into not leaving. You go to qual and you go to ethic, you just do this form. And then you go on a meter and you do a procedure called CS53, <clears throat> where they're going to be asked for overts and withholds and da 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 da. And finally, you sign about one inch thick documents on video camera with other people in the room, like security guard, um, officer, special affairs, execs, lawyer. This is all in the room, mm -hmm. but not within the camera lens. And you sign giving away all your rights. This is what's called route out. Right. You you sign. You will never sue the church. You will never speak derogatorily outside. You won't go to blogs, and you won't interview with Ron Miscavige, and you won't, won't do YouTube videos, and you won't talk to the Daily Mail and the Sun, and blah 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 blah. blah. You're, you're. Now, what you say you will do is. If you are upset or have any grievances, you will obey and do it all through church arbitration. <laughs> what a con. We've looked at different con aspects. This, this is the ultimate con. Arbitration is just a kind of mediation to opposing People have different views, and you mediate, you come to the middle, you know, you arbitrate it. Right. But arbitration within the church means diehard, trusted, sealed members will be the jury. They'll listen to it all, and they'll make the moral pronouncement. Let me tell you something. If any <laughs> of those people in that arbitration were to find that you had every right to demand what you're demanding and make you not guilty of coming against the church unfairly, but you had a fair reason and you're justified in wanting to get your money back or your, your rights, you know, righted. Those people who did that, they might as well bite down on a cyanide pill. I am telling you, their life as they know it, and I'm not saying they'd be killed by any means, so don't take that that way. But their life as a member of the Church of Scientology would, wouldn't be worth 
two right. cents. Wouldn't be worth two cents. Scientology is an entity that absolutely demands your loyalty to the point where you're willing to discard your own kids, yeah. discard your own parents to prove how loyal and how much you love the mother church. The, the, Scientology is designed that way. It's designed that no matter what, Scientology must survive yeah. and must have complete allegiance. Now, every Scientologist is indoctrinated with this. Yeah. You, to be a Scientologist in good standing, you must love Scientology with a passion and you must be loyal to the to them, no matter what. Even if you're giving up your own personal honor, your own integrity. <laughs> Ron, I know you'll agree with me when I say this. In Scientology, if you brazenly lie, lie, character assassinate, give the most heinous accusations, to someone who's a known enemy of the cult, you are glorified. Oh, you'd be given the Medal of Honor, you know, simple as that. Yeah. You'd be, uh, oh, look at, oh, isn't he wonderful? Look, look what he did. Oh, well, let's let's give him a promotion. Let's give Very him a bonus, false you know. witness against an enemy of the church yeah. makes you a hero. That's how twisted it's become. Yeah. There isn't a goodness here. There isn't integrity, truth, honor, although they crave religious recognition. This is so upside down. Yeah. You bear false witness against an enemy and you are the cat's meow. Yep, you're glorified if you did that. <laughs> Just like the international executives swore that COB never touched anybody. Yes. Absolutely yes. swore there and just bald faced lie and then told a story of he found a bird who was hurt one time and nursed it back to health. I'm telling you, man, these guys, they've lost their integrity. And at that point, you lose your integrity and you'll you'll do anything. Well, that that's true. What happened is Tampa Bay Times, formerly St. Pete Times, they've had their <laughs> They've had their snout, their bloodhound <laughs> nose, li literally following the church's tactics. And about a dozen people came forward, went on video, and testified as to internal beatings and mayhem and incarceration and held against will. So when, when Tampa Bay Times was about to publish something called the Truth Rundown. Right. What Ron just said was half a dozen executives flew to those offices in St. Petersburg with affidavits saying that David Miscavige never laid a hand on them. Right. You know, these days everybody has cell phones and all cell phones have video cameras. But Cell phones are very much not allowed. You know that when you're in the Sea Org, you can't call 911. No, I know. There's no outside line. There are no phone booths. You are completely, the only people allowed cell phones are the, red, the salespeople that need to talk to someone to get bring in money. So there's no, no, you absolutely have no line to talk to anyone and you can't appeal to law enforcement. There are no phones. You're not allowed cell phones. Right. So let's get back to Valerie's story. Valerie tried to leave, tried to leave, was told, you're, not, you're never going to leave. You worked for David Miscavige. She goes into the trunk of a car and escapes. But then she makes this, she's talked into going back and she goes to her father 
And her father also encourages her to go back. And that was the weak point in her life yeah. where she signed that she would agree to this kangaroo court of deep, loyal insiders adjudicating her lawsuit. Right. And this 275-pound judge, 70 years old, who is trying to clear his theater, 400 cases juggling, and judges try to just get rid of overload, goes, oh, she signed arbitration. Go, go, go to arbitration. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, this is only the first round and beginning. <laughs> Valerie is not running away just because of this stupid, idiotic first ruling. Now, after Valerie left, many things happened. And she appeared in, she was the first show in season three of The Aftermath. And she told about her escape. She didn't get into life at the base too much. That's part of the lawsuit. And the, the cult, I nearly said the word church, and get all these, <laughs> get bombarded with the name. Right. To, to not call it a church. The cult went ballistic. 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 <laughs> they made hate pages they called her horrible things they made her out to be overly sexually active they just character assassinated her and they did what has become a classic in the cult they got her mother and her brother on video to spit in her face and malign her. This is a cult special. <clears throat> yep. Get your nearest and dearest on camera yep. to malign you and character assassinate you. Now, a little while earlier in this, we talked about how you can lie, you can bear false witness, you can just make up horrible stuff, and you're a hero. Yep. Because you're doing it to a, to a cult enemy. So they got Valerie's relatives to say mean, bad, horrific, made up nonsense, baloney. That's what the church praises because yeah. you're showing loyalty to yep. the cult. Yep. I tell you, Ron, what, what, how did we belong to all of this? Well, I tell you, forty it, years of my life. I had forty-two years. Now, let me tell you, entity, huh? in, intelligence has nothing to do with it. You could be a dummy, or you could be brilliant. You get brainwashed. As a matter of fact, if you're you're very intelligent, you probably even have more of a justification as to why you did it. In other words, you're able to justify it in more. Uh, intelligent terms as well. The reason I did it was, well, of course, of course, that's all reasonable. Then that, that's the reason I, I got brainwashed, and that's the reason I'm disconnected from my uh, daughters. And you know, of course, they, they deserve to be disconnected from. You, if you're brainwashed, you're brainwashed. And I, I did a little. I do a little thing called life lessons, and I have one of them that's called the hardest thing you'll ever do. And I invite people. As a matter of fact, I tell you what. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Go and watch this thing called The Hardest Thing You'll Ever Do. I think it's about eight minutes. You got eight minutes to spare in your life, I'm sure. And you will then see what happens with people who are in the cult and just stay for 20 and 30 and 40 years. You'll see the underlying bottom reason. And if you can do that thing, which I call the hardest thing you'll ever do, you can extricate yourself from the cult. Now, there's a little mystery sandwich for you, okay? Yeah, you know, 
part of the ten, I know why I stayed on an extra 10, 15 years. It was because my son was in the seal. Yeah. And I knew if I had, if I stepped out the way I wanted to, I would lose my son. I lost him anyway. But the point is, love is such a deep, abiding oh. emotion. And love of your family and your family members is weaponized against you. Yep. It is, and I'll tell you this. I, I, I said this it's on a prior interview. As emotional black man. I, mm-hmm. I said this on a prior interview that I remember when my children were born and I saw them for the first time. I had an overwhelming feeling of love for this yeah. new person that is now introduced into my life. And it was like, God, I would do anything to help you and give you as much love as I can and make you blossom and you know, nobody's a perfect father or a perfect husband, and you have various things that you maybe you shouldn't have done, but all things considered, you try to do the best for that child, no matter what. That is used against you, as Karen just said. The cult, yep. the cult uses natural love that you have for family, siblings, yeah. children, parents. That is absolutely the emotional black you leave us you will never speak to your family again no nope. that's the emotional blackmail part yep and and this is not the way a, you know on the one hand they crave religiosity but what religion or church we've said this before ron you can walk in and out of the methodist church the catholic church that yeah. you walk in you walk out <laughs> In Valerie's case, they stalked her. They followed her in cars. She had private investigators literally gang stalking her. This is this is the vengeance after she appeared on um, the aftermath. Yeah. Valerie paid a price. She was stalked. She was harassed. They put up hate site after hate site. So they they used her 80 to 100 hours a week since she was six years old till 37 years old. For 30 years, she was a slave. And they never knew she had all these bad characters. The moment she appeared on the aftermath, she now was this evil, horrible, sexually deviant, oversex, blah, 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 blah. And they put all this on the web. Well, I say this, Valerie, God bless you. You have my complete and utter support in what you're trying to do, and I wish you all the success in pulling it off. And knowing you for the short time I did, and I did know her, but not, not that well, She's not a quitter. And I'll tell you this, you don't fail until you stop trying. And Valerie will pursue this. And I wish you every bit of good luck that possibly I can muster out of my soul. <coughs> Valerie, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> I'd like Valerie to know that that is replicated a hundred thousand times. Yeah. There isn't anybody who hasn't left the cult that doesn't support Valerie. One thousand percent. Valerie is looked on as a hero. Yeah, she is. She's a heroine. She is. She's, a hero. she's going to pursue this, and she's going to come out a winner. Remember, it took Laura Diekman nine years to yeah. finally win. Yep. And these law firms are in it for the long haul. <laughs> There's no. This is only one little chess move of one little pawn by some donkey judge who doesn't know north from south. Oh, this judge is a disgrace. Yeah. Some judges are a disgrace. So, Valerie, you have all our love, all our support, and you will be... She survived 20 years at in base. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a sweetheart of a person. I mean, she's tough. But you, yeah. you just, you'd meet her and immediately you think, wow, what a great, what a great person she is. She's just, uh, she's a winner and she's going to win. So, Karen, I don't know if we should go past this. This is a good point. Yeah. 
just giving Valerie, just showing Valerie, we understand the life you need. We understand this is the battle, your battle of Waterloo. <laughs> yeah. And we're with you. And with that, let oh. me just give my closing remarks and uh, we'll pull the plug on this. Uh, I appreciate all of you who tune into this and do, do you who subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to uh, support this, you can go to my website, therealronmiscavige.com and become a patron. I would appreciate it very much if you did that. But if you could minimally subscribe and share this with as many people as you can, it is very much appreciated by me. So, uh, Karen, I want to thank you for coming on, and uh, it's always wonderful having you and your viewpoint on these things. It's it's loved by a lot of listeners, as you can see. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, and all of you out there. I'm Ron Miscavige. This is Life After Scientology, and... See you on the next episode. Bye-bye for now.